Welcome to a home where sustainability meets modern design, where eco-friendliness and luxurious living coexist in perfect harmony. This is House Senegalia. But before we step into the sustainable home and experience the ultimate in green living, we meet Zintle Zulu, an award-winning illustrator from Johannesburg, taking the Zulu culture to the skies. Explore the vibrant culture of Zanzibar, a tropical paradise off the coast of Tanzania. Then we head on over to Ghana to meet Larry J and see how he upcycles second-hand garments into fashionable clothing. However big or small, our home should be a haven. There's a thousand jobs I need to do around the house. We just don't have the time. But it's not always easy keeping a house in order. It's such a shame we're not using the space. It is absolutely rammed full of stuff. But help is at hand. Ah! Look at this! Slug! You can take back control of your home with clever, common-sense hacks. It's perfect. I love it. That don't bust the bank balance. From this to this, that is just gleaming. Oh, oh my, my God. God. We'll show you how you can make life-changing improvements in just one day. It's nice and clean for Mummy. Yay! I absolutely love it. I don't think it's ever looked that good before. Oh. With better use, and a spruce up of your space. It's wonderful. I love it. You managed to do this in a day. This is absolutely brilliant. Are you getting me all tearing off? In this week's episode of Finest Homes, we visit a modern coastal property in the beautiful Camps Bay, created by G Squared Architecture Studio. With mountain and sea views in abundance, it boasts a layered design that not only withstands, but also celebrates the natural elements. And in your opinion, what makes for a finest home? Views, light, simplicity. That's Finest Homes, only on the Home Channel. Tanya Memmi. Tanya, how's it going? For years, I've been helping people stage, design, and sell their homes. Along the way, I've witnessed the birth of something new, cutting edge home technology. And now I'm on a mission to find the smartest, coolest, most innovative homes to get a glimpse of how we can all live better in the future. So you can control everything in the house, the shades, the music, the lights, the pool. You're the people I have to talk to. And I have help from three smart home experts who will offer insights into the tech, design, and structure of each home. This is Smart Home Nation. Coming up on this week's episode of Real Health, we'll be taking a look at whether or not berberine is effective on its own in the improvement of several metabolic disorders. We take an in-depth look at how neurofeedback can assist the brain to create and stimulate neural pathways. We'll also be discussing factors that may lead to iron deficiency anemia, as well as natural solutions that can help. We'll then share simple exercises to help ease lower back pain and improve core strength. And we'll be shedding light on how hormone optimization can assist men struggling with weight issues and hormone imbalances. That's Real Health, only on the Home Channel Plus. This week on The Property Game, we check in with the property investor who was featured in Season 1 and we find out how her property business has grown in the past year. I'm the one who's doing the online program. How can you say that Dago is a specialist? My income has grown. That's The Property Game, every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m., only on The Home Channel. Minute Meals is all about cooking food that's full of flavour at top speed. 
is it's not just a Thai curry, it's a rice and a salad and a dessert all in under half an hour. So, need a liquidizer. Just gonna chop this up, quite clanky styly. Have a little taste. Woo! Yeah, that's happening. With a lovely custardy filling and a little caramel top. It's gonna be gorgeous. If gardening is your passion, digging in the soil is your pleasure, and growing your own food is your mission, we've got a lot in common. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, including yours truly, with The Gardener magazine. Filled with the latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas, and tips. Available from leading retailers or online at thegardener.co.za. From cover to cover, it's gardening at its best. The Gardener Masterclass is proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, the foremost African commercial and home gardening specialist of globally sold premium seed and innovative gardening solutions, growing together for a sustainable future. And the Gardener and Detainee magazines. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. Well, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. I got gooseys. Look, 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 look. Cute, true gooseys. I love this, you know, when the music starts and we're like all like paranoid. Ah, is everything ready? I'm like, oh, well, it's a bit late now. I'll just eat my broccoli, you know. Um, guys, today is big. It, it, it really is big. And if you've never, ever tried or if you have tried and you've been a complete like, failure at growing your own, especially veg and herbs well then i think you in the right place um today we've got some really cool tips to share with you some interesting hacks um i've got two new characters to introduce to you and i'm going to be giving away something amazing amazing um so and, and yeah lots going on lots going on lots going on but um so if it's about veggies literally from the dirt to the harvest, can you get it right? Well, of course you can. There are a few simple things that we all get wrong and we're gonna go through those. Um, and the first thing is that we eat the elephant in bite-sized chunks. Um, for those of you that are my age and um, maybe a little bit older or slightly younger might remember the TV program, Heidi. Remember Heidi and Die Berger? Yeah, come on, come on, you remember. You remember Heidi and Die Berger. Okay, when Heidi and Peter, okay, used to go up into the mountains, it was my favorite program because shortly after that was Vili Vali. Um, I'm not going to sing the song, but I still do remember it. But when they used to go up into the mountains and unwrap their lunch, which was a little bun, do you remember how Heidi ate that bun? Those little... Hups, hups, little hups. And that's how we've got to do it in little bites. So if you don't really fancy eating an elephant bit by bit, then consider eating a big bread roll bit by bit. Um, guys, welcome. And for those of you that are joining us a bit later, um, welcome to you as well. Now, remember, guys, if you want to comment, please, you've got to comment on the Gardener Facebook, okay? On the Gardener Facebook, not on Tanya Fisser. If you comment on the Gardener Facebook, we'll see you and I'll see you right here. Um, and let's have a look. And of course, that's on Facebook um, or on YouTube. Um, and we're streaming live off both of those right now. Um, people say, is it really live? Oh, yeah, this is live, baby. It ain't get any better than this. Um, and 
yeah, things go wrong and things go right. And when they go wrong, it's fabulous because uh, that's what life is about. Um, so let's see who is with us this morning. Um, we've got Reiki. Good morning from the Strand. Terry Lee, good morning. Um, Rachel, good morning. First time watcher. Rachel, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, yes. And, and guys, you don't have to take notes because remember, you can go back and watch this. Okay. And if you miss something, don't like <laughs> Because sometimes you're so busy writing that you forget to engage. You know, we can't do two things at once. I, I seriously, as much as we all think that we can. It's, it's um, uh, yeah. If you can, uh, talk to me. I need to learn. Uh, Siva Sisa, good morning. Good morning, Siva Sisa. Great to have you with us. Um, David is with us from Northern Ireland, where it feels like autumn. Ah, it feels like autumn. But you're going into... No, spring, spring, daffodils, daffodils. I've seen the pictures, daffodils, all of them, all over. Um, yeah, we're just going into our winter, but it's a great season. Um, uh, who else have we got here? Bernadette, good morning. Uh, Bernadette, you're from Hillcrest. Um, Gazina, good morning. Um, Herman Singh, good morning. Shireen, um, good morning to Tanya and all the viewers. Uh, Tim Basile, from Funderbell Park, good morning. Jerry from Bloemfontein, no, Jenny, beg your pardon, Jenny. That's a cool profile pic you got there going on there. Uh, Jenny from Bloemfontein, good morning. Uh, Candice Codd, uh, where did you just disappear to? I think you went to the top. Uh, where did Candice go? Uh, Lisa Stanley, good morning. Um, oh, you're multitasking. Ah, working and watching. You go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maria Smart, Smart, Swart from Middleburg, um, Brett from Elizabeth to, ah. <laughs> um, Elizabeth is from Amkamas, um, Faraz Ali from Sheffield Beach, first time watcher, well welcome Faraz, uh, it's great to have you with us, Sean Morrison, uh, who else have we got here? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Shireen, yes, I mentioned Shireen. Uh, let's pop to the next screen here. Let's have a look. Ty, good morning. Um, Felicia Smith, good morning from Cowies Hill. Oh, Mia would like to say, Mia would like to say hello. She's a six-year-old fan and would like to know when she can visit Detain Dani. Ach, Mama, Mia, Mia. Uh, you got to get in touch with us. Well, actually, not me. I don't think you're allowed on cell phones or whatever those things are. Um, uh, Felicia, best you get in touch with us uh, so we can make a plan, like maybe for a like special occasion, like a tooth pulling or something. You know, well, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's see if we can make someone's day. Um, Dean, Janine, good morning. Good morning from Somerset West. Uh, guys, it's so good to have you all with us and it's going to be a rocking session. So hang tight, buckle up, because um, we are about to get going. So first off, I'm going to tell you what we're going to be giving away. Now, guys, I've had one such beast for probably about a year. And, and let me tell you, it has come in handy in all sorts of things. Uh, probably the strangest was when it carted uh, Father Christmas into the garden. Uh, true story, because Mother Christmas here has to get dressed up and then has to arrive somehow on a quad bike, a bicycle, um, a wheelbarrow, or something, or a pimped aero cart. Okay, so so this is how Mother Christmas arrived one year in, in one of these. Now, guys, this is called the Works 8-in-1 Aerocraft. Um, and it, it's, it's a beast. It is an absolute beast. Um, and it's got so many gadgets and gizmos. It's got the tires um, that will never deflate, um, which is great. Uh, they, it's got this great bin, which is nice and big. It's so many uses. And just, just quickly, okay, so besides from a normal, like, how's your father? Okay, wheelbarrow, right? Okay, normal wheelbarrow. Um, 
you can also put it like that okay and then there's this net gadget so you can stack a whole lot of things because you see here there that thing can flip up so you can stack things up okay this guy can come off i'm not going to take it off because it's a terrible clutter um a terrible uh, noise like clank clank but the bottom line is you can stack things up here this guy comes off but if you're in the garden okay and i don't know if you have been one of these gardeners you know when you take one of these things black bin bag or, or one of those um those other like grain bags and you're collecting leaves okay yeah. Now, first of all, the, like the first issue is how do you open these things? I mean, could they not put a sticker on it that says like open here? And, that, and then I'm like, anyway, anyway, I opened this one beforehand so that I wouldn't fight and, and say terrible things on a live. Um, anyway, I've seen you. I've seen you. You've got this thing, you're opening it, you're trying to put the leaves in. As you're trying to put the leaves in, it's folding Oh, it's a mess. Then if you have bought the really, the non-recyclable, the ones that aren't made like, like really tough, then it tears and... Uh, yeah. Yes, one of those moments. Anyway, so what you can do is you take this bad boy, pop him in here. Yeah, you see, you see, you see, see, life becomes so much easier. And then you put this guy here and you pop him over there. You see, you see, you see. I've got them here somewhere. And you can just pop your black bag in. Yes, like so. Okay, there it goes, there it goes. That goes over there, that goes over there, and we can feed it underneath it there. You see me? You see, you see, you see. So then you don't have to worry about it, okay? So, like, you know, life becomes a whole lot easier, and you know I love gadgets. Um, and I've got some other cool gadgets to show you today. In fact, I've held myself back. Like <laughs> they were delivered to me about two weeks ago. And I have held myself back from opening these things. But more about that a little bit later. So the bottom line is today, not today, but from now, up until the end of May, you can enter to win one of these guys. Now, the other thing I want to show you about it, um, let me take this guy off. Okay makes life a whole lot easier and um, so what it can do is also just fold away quite simply so it's it really is just moving this gadget to there all right um, and then all you've got to do is grab it at the back here and you can just pop this guy up like that if I can just open that gadget and there we go and so then you see then she are standing you see, then it's not lying flat. So we've got it at that point then, whole lot easier. I'm actually gonna take this thing off here um, so I can just show you. So that's that connector there. Okay, so let's take that away. But there's a new thing that the guys from AeroCart have added to it. And these are the guys from Works, okay. And what it is, is a, a conversion kit. And the conversion kit, it's like, could, could you possibly pimp this thing some more? Well, you can, because you take, get this, and this is the new conversion thing. So you see here, it's got these wheels. <laughs> so you, all you do is you take this guy over here and you attach him there. Okay, so you can imagine it. You attach him there. This guy folds back, because I just had it folded back. And then you have got a wheel, there that you can move around like 90 degree, 180 degree turns, um, which for me just works brilliantly. These obviously come off because you can pull the handles off. So you've got so many different options. And for me as a gardening gadget to have around a one purpose that could do one tool, one gadget that could do so many different things really, really works. So, um, Let's put this baby over here. So, of course, the burning question is how do you enter? So, the conversion kit alone is valued at 2,999 rond. And the way that you've got to enter is as follows. Now, remember, the details are on screen. That's how you enter. Check on the screen. Are you watching? The details are on screen. Okay, if you're missing it, uh, grab your cell phone or take a screenshot. Or remember, you can rewind after the live. Okay, so that's how you enter. 
and we will let you know at the end of May. And what are we giving away? We're giving away one of these bad boys and the conversion kit. Now, here's a little bit extra. The first 15 people that buy one of these awesome works carts, okay? The first 15 get one of the conversion kits thrown in. So the first 15 that purchase on works.co.za, works SA, that's W O R X S A dot C O dot Z A, get one of these conversion kits thrown in. Pretty cool. I know. I got mine already. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so all you're gonna do is get that and then um, enter as well, and you could win one of these things. Seriously awesome. And uh, and it kind of can do it because guys. I, I, I'm, I'm very hard on, on gadgets, hey? I, I really, really am. And, uh, and I haven't broken mine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, so that's saying something. I haven't broken it. And the guys from Works, they're, they're actually really funny because uh, they say, say to me, like, if I phone them or something, they say, have you broken anything yet, T? And I'm like, no. They say, ah, oh, that's terrible. And I'm like, I'm trying really hard. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, I leave it up to you. Okay, I got my coffee here. I hope you've got your stuff. Mm. All right, guys, so let's get into it. The change of the season is here. Absolutely. That's the roof expanding, if you heard that noise. Um, the change of the season is here, and it's all about what to plant. And it's probably the question I am asked most often. What can I plant? Is it the right time? Um, is it now for the right time for, for this or for that? And I, I want to give you one rule. One, one rule. And it's quite simple. If you are going to purchase seedlings, okay? Now we call these seedlings. These are, these are young little germinated seeds that are now in a little punnet. And when you pop along to your local garden center, well, that's how you find them. If it is available on the shelf at your local garden center, guys, you can then plant it. Okay, all right. They are not going to have something growing and available for sale if, if, you, can't, if you can't buy it and you can't plant it now. So it, it does, does it make sense? Um, so go to your local garden center and see what is available. And I'm gonna tell you what's available because all of the following you can buy as seedlings or you can sow them as seed, but we're gonna to get to seed sowing next. Okay, so what is available? Well, come along with me and, and I'll have a look. Oh, but before we get there, come. So let me tell you guys, we've got this wonderful little cafe up the road called Mandela. Uh, best coffee, really best coffee, great food, um, and lovely people. And in fact, they act as storage for me because place that I buy a whole lot of my fertilizer from and stuff is like just next door to them. <laughs> and I'm always running late and they always stay open for me so I can pick up whatever I need. And I rushed in there the other day and there I saw this. Look, 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 look. No, no, no. Don't. And I was like, OMG, where are these from? Oh no, somebody dropped them off and they were trying to sell them and whatever. I'm like, caramba. I said, I definitely look, she's even got bling. Um, she's even got bling and she's got a big steak. And listen, and we've got monkey problems. And, and so I'm like, well, besides the monkey problems, I just think they would be so cute in the veggie garden. So anyway, so I bought her, she was, it, I shoved her in the car and we've named her Susan because she looks like Susan, doesn't she? Her lips are quite tight. That's Susan lips. Susan, and she's giving you that stare. Oh, look, look, she's not happy with me. Anyway, that's Susan. And then this is definitely a Beverly. This is Beverly. Aren't you meant to do that when they're dancing or something? This is Beverly, she's a Beverly. Um, anyway, the place I got them from is called Mandela Cafe. Mandela Cafe, guys. Um, and they're in KwaZulu-Natal, Bothers Hill. Uh, so, yeah. 
<laughs> and if you really don't want to grow your own veg, they also have an amazing supply of organic veg. Um, anyway, I, I did put a Mari gold in her hair here. Um, yeah. No, no, Tanya, don't. Okay, but that, that's a Beverly. That's a Beverly. Okay, anyway, we're on to about what you could be buying now to plant. Change of the season opens up so many opportunities. Now, if you are in the tropics or subtropics, coastal belt, coastal belt of South Africa, um, subtropical, so Nelsprate up there, it, it's been difficult. You, you, veggie gardening in summer in the tropics is quite a challenge. Yeah, yeah every hoho, every nunu from outer space comes to you. Um, but most certainly during the cooler months, and those of you that live in the high felt, well, you actually have so many more options. So many more options. But in terms of coastal belts, it's the best time to sow and grow tomatoes and all your brassicas, so your cabbages, and all your beautiful Asian greens. Likewise, beetroots. Okay, here, beetroot. Nice and easy. Simple, simple. We've got some bok choy here. Of course, calendulas. And when you are buying your tray of whatever, you are going to buy a tray of violas so that you can interplant because we're going to talk about that a bit later. But this, guys, is from the veggie garden. I, I had to remove, I had to pull them out this morning. I mean, and, and look at that beautiful soil and we'll show you about that and how to arrange and get that just now. But this is a beautiful um, Mizuno. Um, it's, it's an Asian green cross, like a herb. Um, you, you'll know this if you buy those packets of, of lettuce leaves from that shop. You'll see this leaf, you'll recognize it. And it's quite mm, peppery, almost like rocket but not as peppery, but delicious. And you can also use this as, as a stir fry. And the great thing about it is, I mean, shame, this poor guy's wilting, but you can see as we pick, we pick from the outside. We pick from the outside and then more just start growing. More just push up from the center. Okay, so the bottom line is whatever you see now available in seedling trays, guys, you can plant, okay? You can plant, all right. Very, very important. Um, now, let's get down to seed sowing, okay? Now, guys, when it gets to seed sowing, hmm, I know there've been a few disasters, okay? Some of them on a national scale um, or international scale. So, uh, and, and we get a few things wrong, and, and guys, if, you, if you're still not sure about it and, and need a bit more confidence, uh, please do go on to Garden Chew because there are entire 7 to 8 to 10 to 12 minute edutainment tutorials. I don't even know what other word to use, that will take you every step of the way of how to do it. Um, okay, but the first thing that I want to warn you against is the following. When you are going to go to buy your seeds, what you probably are, are going to be doing in your lunch hour or when you have to quickly rush out and go and do something, you are going to buy every packet of seed that you see. Okay, because you're excited. Hmm. Retail therapy. Be cautious, pick your seeds, get them, choose what you're going to eat actually, what you might enjoy, and it sounds weird, but yes, um, whether it be radish, kale, it's a great time for kale, remember. Anything that looks like a cabbage, that's a great time to plant them now. So that goes for a broccoli, a Brussels sprout, um, any of your Chinese, Asian greens, um, uh, mustards. Yeah, any of those, any of those, you plant them now. Swiss chard, come on, the food of giants. Carrots, onions. Baby cabbage and more greens. This is English rape. A great green to use, to grow. It grows like hair on a dog's back. Um, 
do not sow the whole packet and that goes for any packet of seed just as an FYI how do you store them personally you store them what I do is I take this whole box this box has just come out of the fridge around the corner there and that's where they live all my seed just stays in the fridge so that it's at a good temperature and not in a hot garage not in a box that is sealed that could get too humid um, and that's what you want to avoid remember sunlight can destroy the seeds okay and if your seed packet is from um, 1829 uh, what have you got to lose sow it see what happens you know but what what is important and, and that what I need to tell you is the following that the effort that goes into creating a packet of seed for us humble consumers to purchase is beyond, is absolutely beyond, and the testing and the science that goes behind it. Because no seed is put in one of these packets unless it has above an 80% germination rate. Above. Like, that's insane, guys. So, like, if we sow the whole packet of carrots and only four come up, and uh, some, we did something wrong. It's not the seed's fault. Okay. Uh, it's prepped, it's ready, it's for us. And they've done everything possible. And they've chosen the best varieties. Because it's all about success. It is all about success. Because if I grow the best carrots, I'm going to do it again. Because when you're good at something and you get it right, you want to do it again. Okay, so let's go into some of the basics of seed sowing. So some you sow in situ. What does that mean? That means you sow them where they are going to live, grow, have and mature. Okay, now what would those be? Those would be carrots. Okay, you can also do it with beetroot, like these over here. In fact, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, a fan of buying beetroot in a tray. Um, I really am not, because when you do buy it like this, um, it, it, I mean, it's a root crop. It means that you've got to open these up like that and then plant them. It's way better to rather sow them. And when you sow them, believe it or not, <laughs> wait, wait, I'm looking for you. I are looking. Uh, do we have a beetroot here? Did I have a beetroot here? No, I didn't, but I've got some. I've got some radish. When you sow them, guys, no matter how hard you try, you are going to sow them quite thick. Um, but above all of that, at the back of the packet, just, just, just come look here. Just, just, I'm just going to reveal something to you very quickly. The back of the packet, just, just at the back of the packet, it tells you everything. Sowing directly, how far apart, how long it'll take to germinate, okay? So, um, yeah, I know we run out every day and like, guys, have you germinated yet? I think we scare the living out of them half the time because they get such a fright because we've got this booming voice. Some of you I do know just tiptoe up to them. But you're like, every day, every day, every day, every day. But, um, yeah, the back of the seed packet tells you how long they take to germinate. All right, so... Now, um, so that is in situ. So basically in situ is you are going to prepare your soil, compost, you're going to add in good layer of compost, all right? And this is for anything really, good thick layer of compost. You also are going to add in bone meal, if you can, add the bone meal in or add superphosphate and you're going to nourish the soil with either 315 organic which will really work. And the, once again, your, your instructions are on the back. You put that beautiful thick layer on and then you turn the soil. Okay, you've sown your seed. All right, your seed is now up and it's really, really thick. At this point, which is one of the most critical and I'm going to demonstrate it here because I do not have a garden that I can take you off to. But what I am going to show you is what we call thinning out. Um, and thinning out, guys, is, is one of the most important things that you need to do, especially when you're sowing in situ. Because a lot is going to come up 
Um, but if you don't thin them out, you're going to get carrots that are growing like this. You're going to get things that are not getting enough space, which means they're unable to mature. So if this were one row, you are going to sacrifice some. You have to. You have to sacrifice some. Because if you look on the packet, it'll tell you that how far they should be. So if this were radish, you would want to sacrifice quite a few. Now you either do it by pulling them out or you just nip them off. Okay, so you nip them off, but don't throw it away. They're microgreens. Mmm. Mmm. And they're good. And they're good. I believe there's some questions that are that are coming through. So let's just have a look here. Um, Renata, um, a, a pakkie a saat het uit my hand geglip en a klomp saat het in die grond geval. Na jylle klomp eiend, kom nou op, kan ek hulle uitplant en herplant. Is that right? Yes. Yes, you can. Absolutely. But you must do it now, 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 now. Okay. And when you are, and I'm going to show you that now, how do you do that? Well, no, you've got green fingers, baby. You have got green fingers. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Felicia, every single broccoli seed I've planted have come up leggy, leggy and thin, even those in the grow house. Okay, all right. That's a very good question because seeds need the following. They need light. Now, guys, if you are putting your seeds, if you are sowing them in a tray like this, they need to have light. Okay. And as soon as they've germinated in your grow house, all right, and they get to this, what we call the two leaf stage. Do you see this? Two leaf stage. Okay. I need you to start moving them out and getting them into more sun. Because if they don't get into more sun, they are going to get all spindly. They need sun. Okay. So, but of course, you're not going to take them from the little grow house and put them out into a 30 degree autumn sunny day no 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 you're going to move them gradually okay but seed sowing guys so many different ways to do it and i'm going to quickly whip through them uh so one in a tray like this okay nice and easy what do you use um different combinations that you can use of course my favorite is the palm peat <gasps> look at this baby one block makes all of this over here beautiful for holding moisture because the key component and the key reason why we fail is because of moisture. Okay, water. Seeds need water in order to germinate. Okay, so can you believe this one block? This. This block. Yeah. Made this. All of this. Okay, so it's really easy. Pop it in here. Sow your seed. Um, and then... You can also use what we call a germination mix. Um, and it really is up to you guys because each one will work on and find whatever works for them. And, and that's the personal journey of gardening. Okay, so ideally into trays um, or there are other things that you can use, of course. Now, these little guys here are about 14 days, two weeks, two weeks from sowing. The important thing that when you are sowing, and let's take something like the onions. Okay, so I'm going to open up these little onions here. Okay, and what you do is pop them into a little container. Because you will be utterly surprised and gobsmacked when you actually see how many seeds are in here. Because if we had an 80% plus germination rate, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, well, there's like over 60 here. Over 60. Okay, so how do we get it right? And this is how we're going to get it right. Guys, very quickly, very, very quickly, I'm going to show you. So here, okay, and into your tray, into your tray. And the best way that you need to do this is to try and be consistent. And sometimes... Sometimes it takes a, a little while, but you've got to do this to get your consistency uh, because if you don't, um, you end up with um, some problems along the way. Of course, egg boxes, perfect for sowing seeds, okay, perfect, same thing, okay, in there, 
around, okay? And here's the other one. Now, if any of you have been a YouTube follower on some of those other channels, um, you might see that they just put the little egg, the, the little, um, we call them a foo-foo in our household, the inside of a toilet roll holder. But guys, you've got to put them inside something or else they just keep falling over. And I'm sure you've experienced that. So what, what I do is I either put them into a little pot like this because I really don't need, let's say if, it, let's say if these were, were pumpkins, you don't need more than three pumpkin plants because if you know how big a pumpkin gets, um, you really don't need more than that. Or likewise, even a cucumber. Um, you don't need that many. So they work perfectly. And then when it comes to transplanting, well, out they come just like that, okay? And you bury this whole thing. Wow. Bury it, okay? Beautiful. Now, you'll see here that two have emerged. Two have emerged, and what we have to do is I have to sacrifice the weakest one. Have to, because I only want one. I want the best one and I want the strongest one. Okay, back to the seed sowing. If the seed is large, all right, and you can actually see it, the easiest way, put it into your palm of your hand and you have got to go as methodically <laughs> as possible. Because in this way, we are going to ensure success. So little lines all the way along. Um, and you've got to do that, guys. You just have to do that. All right. Then a light covering. All right. A light covering of our same palm peat. A very light covering. All right. Firm it down. One of the most important aspects of seed sowing is to firm it down. And then, of course, because life happens, we forget what we've sown. So always write a label and the date. Okay. Onions. And what are we today? Second. Fourth. We're the fourth. Hey, it's my birthday this weekend. It's my birthday. I don't know if I'm really looking forward to this one. It's a biggie, guys. Okay. Right. So there it goes. And then watering. Key. Key. Watering and light, guys. So important. Now, when it comes to watering, um, this is my go-to gadget. This. This little guy with this fine nozzle. Because look, 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 look. Oh, no, 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 no. You can control it just by squeezing. You control it. Okay. But you'll notice it's not coming out like... I've seen you. Okay. Even these little youngsters here. Look at that. Nice and fine and gentle. That's what we want to do. Okay. The next step where we go wrong. This happens. Most of us, this happens quite easily. There we get that part. I get you. I got you. Okay, next step. Pricking out. And that's where things go pear. Um, and when we talk about pricking out, that means we've got to get these little cabbages, because those are all little cabbages, to the next stage. And this is where it goes pear. And how do I know that? Because it's happened to me a lot of time. I've simply run out of time to then get them to the next stage. And if you don't, and don't try and transplant from here, from this two leaf, straight into the veggie garden. Because guys, it's going to be a disaster. Okay, complete. So what you do now is very, very simply get, and I prefer using at this point, I use a germination mix, okay, because it's light. Um, it's got a bit of vermiculite in it. Okay, all right, there, there, there. Okay, this is pricking out, guys. The best tool in the business, the best tool in the business <laughs> is one of these. What are these? These are leftover Chinese takeaway chopsticks. Yes, keep them. Best, best tool for pricking out. Okay, so what we do is, and you can see how well used these are. <laughs> so what you do is take the thinner end and... Uh, Jeez, I'm making a terrible mess here. You're gonna make a little high key in the middle. Do you see? A little high key. Okay, you're gonna grab him. Okay, there, not by the leaves. You're gonna grab him just there, below the stem. Do you see that? You're gonna pop that little guy in and wiggle him loose. Wiggle him loose. Try and keep, ah, oh, there we go. Try and keep as much soil on as possible. 
from there into there. Do you notice my hands have not moved, they are still there, and I have not used my fingers to try and squash it because invariably, watch this space. If I try and do that, and if I do that, and if I do that, I'm going to break something. I, I, I have squashed the stem already, I, I could feel it. Okay, so uh, once again, nice and simple. Little high key, grab him just underneath there, wiggle him loose. Oh, look how healthy these roots are. Feed them in. Okay. Firm it down. Right, and now, guys, this little guy now goes to the next stage. Okay, so he goes to the next stage. He needs a bit of topping up of soil. Um, but the next stage is nice and easy because now we can start introducing some food. Okay, they need food now. And the food that you need to start introducing, oh, and by the way, when you are, when they are at this point, also a very simple practical tip is to take them and put them into a tray like this. So they all stand together. You know, like that song, we all stand together, boom, boom, that one. Let, let them hold each other up because I guarantee you, one of them's gonna fall over, something's gonna happen. You wait for them to get a bit bigger and you start giving nutrition. Now, in terms of nutrition, guys, I know there's a lot out there. But I'm gonna, it's got a bit of a smell, but that's fine. Wash your hands. Oh, and here's a quick hack. When you're in the veggie garden, you've been gardening, your hands are dirty, guys, your hands are dirty. And, I mean, my jeans, I don't know what they look like here, but my jeans at the back are always just really dirty. They're like really, really dirty. So what we have in different areas around the garden is um, we have this. Now, I just brought this here to hang it up. And all it is is an onion bag, okay, with a cake of soap in it. Next to a tap, obviously. All right. So when you're in the garden, you're like, oh, where do I find, how do I, what do I wash? How do I grab the, the thing? Because your hands are very, very dirty. Well, you just, there it is. Wash and go. Um, that works really superbly. Okay. As soon as your plants start getting a bit bigger and you're wanting to feed with something a bit more, you can always use this over here, which is Nutri-Feed. Nutri-Feed can get used on anything, guys, from your indoor plants to your herbs to your veggies. Um, also really, really affordable. In terms of your dilution here, it's five, 10 grams, 10 grams, which is a little, there's a little um, spoon in here. 10 grams in five liters of water. So, how far it goes is really, really important. And that you dilute and away you go. That's feeding, guys. And feeding, you must, you must, you must. And there is, of course, we've also got Nutrisol. Um, Nutrisol basically is, so that is a pure organic. Um, your Nutrisol can also get used as a, Folia speed feed or as a drench, it's 10 mils into five liters of water. And this is a good all purpose macro, okay? So it has more of your macronutrients. In fact, it is purely your N, your P and your K. Um, so this you would use if you're wanting to just get some really good vuma. What I recommend is that you take that and you take that and then this is what we call the booster. Okay, so, so there's your, your main things. And here's your pick-me-upper, okay? That's like your immune fizz. That's this. Okay, right. Got that. Um, oh, and if you're worried about dilutions and all of that thing here, um, the, the, the good thing with the sea grow is you could, you could double their dilution. You could double it. And because it's organic, you're not going to harm the plants. Yeah. Um, okay. And the other thing is, some of you don't know this, but when you do buy these, the lid actually has your measurements in it. There's 10 mils, there's 20 mils. Okay. Right. So that's feeding. And it's important, guys. Feeding is so important because if you don't feed and if your soil is not good, you're not going to get the right results. Okay. Now, I believe there's some questions. Um, uh, oh. Where are we? 
questions. Janine, what? When do you know when to harvest onions? Okay, nice and simple. Onions is a long crop. It is a long, long crop, guys. Um, where I had them here. Um, so, your onions take 60 to 90 days, can even take longer. When your onion starts from the top, starts drying, starts dying back, okay, you've got to leave it. You've got to wait till all of that green has died back. And you can actually test the bulb. You can go to the soil and you can just have a look and feel it. But it's a long crop, you've got to be patient. You will then remove them and then by those dried things, you've got to hang them, okay? So you then hang them and in a cool area which can get some, some um, uh, breeze through there and that will work perfectly. Because then harvesting is nice and easy, but it is a long crop, so you do have to be patient, okay? So with the onions, uh, who was that? Who sewed something that or threw the onions on the floor and they came up? Renata. Mm. Renata, so I've showed you how to prick them out now and I've showed you how to grow them on. So um, you're all good to go. Okay, Tumi wants to know, is the climate in Pretoria suitable for growing brinjal seeds and seedlings? I've tried and failed a couple of times. Okay, brinjal's easy to grow, but it's about timing. Now, you're getting a bit cold, all right? So when you're getting a little bit cold, your germination needs to take place in a warm spot. So it can either be right close to a window, okay? Close to a window where you're getting some nice warmth. And then when you get them into this stage, when you have then pricked them out and popped them into this and grown them on a bit, when you then plant them into the garden, okay? Frost, yes, okay? Because you're living in a colder area. So what do you do? What are the options? Guys, there are many options. So the one is frost cover, which is this white stuff that you buy it and keep it because you can basically pop this over your plants you can do it by means of, and one of the easiest ways um, that we've seen it done is, is literally you just take um, some, some tubing, some electrical tubing, yeah, and you push it in the ground and you pop it over that way, and then you just cover the plant. You cover it like that. When you're covering your frost guard, and by the way, in the May issue that's out now, there's a really good article on how to deal with the frost and some ways of getting around and how to use this stuff properly so that your plants don't frost. Very, very important. And the other thing is that you can actually just leave that on. The plants can grow, but ideally you do want to open it up a bit. Okay, You want to open them up during the day and then as soon as the cold starts arriving, you can then tuck them back in. Another easy, easy way for young seedlings is the following. And here you just want a Stanley knife, but please be careful with it. Um, do be careful. Let's just take one of these plastic bottles and you're just going to do that. Okay. And let's say that this was my little guy that I had just transplanted. Let's just put him here. Let's say he's in the ground and he's busy growing and you just take that and put him over there. And we've made our own little cloche. Nice and simple, allows the plant to transpire and grow and it does the job nice and easily. Okay, so those are the ways. And of course, raising them, if you're growing them in pots, which you can grow your veg in pots and mixing them up, um, just raise them from the floor. Because on the floor, obviously, cold air sinks. Okay, hot air rises. So by raising it and putting it on a table or on a windowsill, then you've taken them away from the frost, okay, which is so, so important. Right, okay, seed sowing. Yo, guys, this has been a monster. All right, now, the other thing that I want to tell you about is companion planting. Now, companion planting, yo, some of you get very, very stressed out about it and very confused. And I want to just give you the basics. Companion planting means that we are planting plants next to each other and plants around each other that enjoy the same space. Um, and it, we do it for several reasons. So let's just use an example. So if I had to plant, if I had to plant cabbages, I would plant 
Near them, I plant beetroots, I plant celery, I plant spinach, and I plant lettuce. Those five love growing next to each other, all right? And we don't like what we call monocropping. So that means I'm going to have one cabbage here, I'm going to have a beetroot there, over here I'm going to have a celery, there I'm going to have spinach, and here I'm going to have a few lettuce. That is companion planting, when we've got lots of things together, almost like this. Do you see? Do you see here? So cabbage, there's chilies, there's some bok choy, oh, chilies, and guys, it's time to harvest, eh? Harvest chilies, harvest now, make mazavaroos, make, store them inside some vinegar with a bay leaf and a few peppercorns, and you've got chilies for the next year. But companion planting is by mixing things up. And you can find lists and lists and lists of do's and don'ts on what you should be planting next to each other and what you shouldn't. Okay, another good example, which is very, very common for most of us, because the things we like growing, would be carrots, beans, onions, peas, peppers, and tomatoes. Okay. Now, when you plant some of these things together, like we all know basil and tomatoes, yeah, it improves the taste of the tomato. And if you're planting beans and what we call legumes, they actually release the nitrogen, make the nitrogen more available for the other plants. So that makes it accessible to other veg. And that's why they always say to you, and you hear about um, Crop rotation. What on earth are they talking about? Crop rotation. Okay. I'm not a farmer. What does it mean? Basically, it means if you have planted in this area a root vegetable, like a beetroot, okay, or a carrot, the next thing you plant there should be a top growing, like lettuce or your broccoli, okay, because what happens is these things use different nutrition. And when you planted a root, the root veg actually pulls up the nutrition to the upper layers of soil and makes it available for when your next planting is, which is your top veg. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, of course it makes sense. Okay, so um, I'm not going to get too hung up on companion planting, but there are a couple of things that make it very practical. And that's as follows. When they are growing next to each other, they give support, okay? So they hold each other up. Um, and when you're planting close like that in this community, they also provide shade for some of the other plants that are not as fast growing. Um, what they also do, because they're giving that and covering the soil, you have far less weeds that are going to come up. Yeah, and of course, most importantly, they're gonna help each other out. Um, now remember when you've planted, okay, when you have planted and you've finally got, finally, 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 like hallelujah, you've actually got to putting these young seedlings now, which you have nurtured and looked after and spoken to and given some choice words to, you get to put them into the garden, all right, remember to mulch. And mulching could be straw. It could be your compost. Um, it could simply be some leaves, okay? But mulch the soil, especially if you are planting some young seedlings in. Okay, guys, very, very, very important. Okay, let's get to, sure, uh, I think I'm running out of time. Let's get to what can go wrong and how on earth do we pick all this stuff? How do we get it right? Okay, so what can go wrong? Of course something's gonna go wrong. I mean, goodness, you're planting some beautiful veg, but I will tell you that healthier veg, healthier veg, healthier veg that you have fed accordingly, okay? That you have fed with either the Nutri-Feed or the Nutri-Sol, healthier veg make stronger plants that are more resistant to ho, ho attack. Am I just saying this? It's proven. It is a proven fact. Okay, it's a proven fact that plants that are healthier have less likelihood of being attacked. So keep your nutrition going. It's important. It's important. And 
if you read on the back of the packet and it says here, I see I'm a I'm a soak, whatever. Oh, what does it say? Oh, every two weeks. Do it every two weeks. Oh, and I want to show you a very quick tip. A very, very quick tip. Um, I'm going to need this. Okay, very, very quick tip. If you have bought some seedlings, okay, if you have bought some seedlings, and I'm looking for some water, if I can find some water, I think I'll find some here. If you have bought some seedlings, and I actually strongly recommend you do this, if you've bought some seedlings from your local garden centre and they're looking a bit off colour, okay, even your own, all right, even your own, okay, I've put two litres of water into this little container, all right, and this really does help, and, it, and, it, and I'm going to say this because it's also common practical sense. When you are transplanting this, these little seedlings, don't do it in the heat of the day, early morning or late afternoon. But if you want to give them a bit of an oomph, okay, a bit of an oomph, a bit of a like head start, then what you do is you take this, take your Nutrisol, okay, and you are going to make a dilution, Okay, which in this case, if you follow the instructions, which are on the back, it's going to tell you very, very simply that you are going to use your 10 mils, okay, into 5 litres. Now, I'm not going to use 5 litres, so there it is. Pop it into here. Doesn't look like much, but this is powerful stuff. Because what I'm going to do now, because I'm going to plant later this afternoon, take your tray, okay, before you're going to prick them out, and you just pop it in there. And you can take these little guys and just pop them in here. So they're basically going to get a really good drench and a good feed, okay, before we move them out. And that the same to say with your seedling trays. Do that and you will see the difference, okay. Do that. And, you know, you don't have to throw this out. You, you, so you can, you can just soak and then take out and then put back, all right. Um, and the same token, you could also use NutriFeed to do exactly the same thing. And what we're doing here is called a drench. Okay, so we've drenched, especially when you buy seedlings and you see they're very, very dry, um, like grey. The soil is almost grey. Do that because it's just going to perk them up. Okay, right, guys, I told you that there was something that I have been holding myself back from opening. And true story, true, true story because um, I actually only, only opened this one this morning, and it's this thing. Um, so take a look here. This is, oh, and you know, these people from Gardena, they showed it to me about a year ago. About a year ago, they teased me with it, and they said, oh, tea? Tanya, look what we've got, but you can't have it yet. I'm like, oh, come on, come on, guys. Mm. And it's this whole set of the, what they call the cut range. It's the Gardena cut range. And it's for harvesting, okay? It's the multi-cut. Um, but you see, look, sharp. So we all know the schnip schnap. We all know the schnip schnap. The schnip schnap has been used for insane things. Not what it's meant to be used for. And you still haven't broken it. Why? Because it's got a 25 year guarantee, okay? insane but this guy over here which is the herb cutter i want to show you they have they've taken this beyond okay so yeah we all know it we all do it um we all want to know how do we strip this and whatever whatever so there have a look look what they've put there these little guys so all you do is you once you've cut it you put it in there find the right groove and <laughs> come on Come on, isn't that awesome? I could just do this all day. Hey, huh? look at that. There it is. I just love it. I think it's wicked. Stainless, German precision. Hmm, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Okay, and then there's, of course, just the, your normal scissors, which I know you will have to tie up with a big chain. Um, because if your household is like our household, if you hang a pair of scissors up there, 
by this afternoon. <laughs> the fairy scissors took it away. And it's not me. Okay. Anyway, uh, guys, come and have a look along here. And uh, I told you, I, I actually, I didn't unpack them because I wanted to share this with you guys. Because they, but it's really, I've had to hold myself back for these. Okay, so this is what we call the grip cut. And um, I told you, I saw these like a year ago. Um, so the grip cut, look how new it is. Oh, come on, I can't get this thing out quick enough. Oh, oh. <laughs> look, look, look how small it is. Look at the bubba. Look how small it is. Ah, oh, mommy, look. Okay, now what is this? What is this thing for? Let me show you. Let me show you. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. So if I'm picking a few herbs, okay, I'm going to cut. Oh. Oh, look at that. And then, pew. Okay, so this is what we call the one arm bandit because you only need one hand to do it. Uh, the other hand, of course, you could be on the cell phone um, or you could be pulling weeds. How nifty is that? I love it. It's mine. Ha! Yeah. Oh, it's so lovely. It's so new new. Okay, the, the, this other one, which is called the fresh cut. Guys, I've got to open them all. I've got to open them all. Okay, come. I'm coming back here. I'm coming back here. Um, uh, this little guy is also new new. And he does not have that other gadget, but he's got a little protective, how's your father, okay, to protect him. And this, you see, for doing things like that, for just picking a few herbs, deadheading, okay, nice and simple. Uh, I could even do that, yeah. Pruning, shaping, absolutely. Uh, but these guys need to be looked after. And of course, when you finished using them, Make sure you give them a good clean, a good wipe down, especially if you picked anything that might have any sappiness or you did uh, cut something um, that might have left some residue on there. It's really important to give them a good wipe. And this over here is the gadget that I've left to last because I'm going to have the most fun with it. And it's called the Veggie Cut. Now, if you want to play Cowboys and Indians, um, well, you can always attach this in your in your pouch okay um but how often do you use the secateur to do the wrong thing like to cut the cabbage or to cut the bok choy um and this knife is going to go a long long way so i had to pull this out the garden this morning so that i could show you um why and how we would use it um but very simply there it goes oh Beautiful bok choy. We are going to be having stir fry tonight for sure. They are a beaut. Oh, I like this. Comfy, well balanced. Man. Guys, you did good. You did good. Um, beautiful tools, lovely gadgets. These are mine. I'm putting them in my pocket right now so that nobody after the live comes to take them away. Um, I seriously am, and I, I'm also taking my secateurs because I know someone will take them. Um, I think I may as well take my nutri feed as well because, you know, these oaks here, at the end of a live, they'll come and they'll say, well, can we take this for supper? And I'm like, no, or they, it, it, if something's left over, you know what I mean? But anyway, okay, I'm just hiding this stuff here. Guys, remember that you can also get some great gardening information through our beautiful magazines. Grow to Eat is out right now. Um, Grow to Eat is full of all the goodness. 96 pages of pure goodness available at your local garden centre and at most leading retail outlets. This is our winter edition, which will take you all the way through winter. So basically we're looking at June, July and August. Okay. In here, every month, Say for May, say for June, we will give you all the gardening tasks you need to know, plus some really yummy recipes. I have spoken about kale. I said it's the time to sow it now. In here are some great recipes. The lowdown on kale, all you need to know, and all the great varieties that are out there. Um, so guys, get your copy. And of course, there's also Gardening by the Moon. Um, 
Every month there is the lunar calendar in there. And then the gardener and detainees. Quite apt that we have got an ornamental kale, which is truly beautiful. Um, cabbage family, um, uh, not edible. Well, it is edible. It's just very bitter. I would prefer to eat normal cabbage, uh, but incredibly beautiful in the winter garden. You can buy them as seedlings and pop them in. They can cope with frost and they add a real pack a punch of color. Um, so whether it be uh, in the veggie garden or even just um, in and amongst your flower beds. But in this month's issue of The Gardener, there's indigenous indoor plants or house plants, which I know everybody wants to know what winter flowers you can plant in the veggie garden, guys, um, earth stars, and of course, our DIY is how to build your very own DIY light stand. Guys, I think I've packed all my things um, before I leave you. Yeah, actually, I think I might need this as well. Um, huh? Where's the secateurs? The scissors. The scissors. Where's the scissors? Oh, the scissors is hanging up. But guys, um, first of all, just a huge, huge thanks um, to our sponsors, to Works, for giving this away. Um, remember about the competition. Uh, there it's coming up on your screens now on how to enter into the competition, guys, and you could win that works amazing cart plus with the converter. Uh, very, very grateful thanks to Stark Airs and to Gardena. I've got all my gadgets. I'm taking my Nutri Feed. I'm taking my Nutri Soul. I'm taking my scissors. I'm leaving Beverly behind. Till next time. God bless you all, and most importantly, happy gardening. The Gardener Masterclass was proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, the foremost African commercial and home gardening specialist of globally sold premium seed and innovative gardening solutions, growing together for a sustainable future. And the Gardener and Detainee magazines. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. If gardening is your passion, digging in the soil is your pleasure, and growing your own food is your mission, we've got a lot in common. Get access to the greatest gardening minds, including yours truly, with The Gardener magazine. Filled with the latest gardening trends, inspirational ideas and tips. Available from leading retailers or online at thegardener.co.za. From cover to cover, it's gardening at its best. Welcome to a home where sustainability meets modern design, where eco-friendliness and luxurious living coexist in perfect harmony. This is House Senegalia. But before we step into the sustainable home and experience the ultimate in green living, we meet Zintle Zulu, an award-winning illustrator from Johannesburg, taking the Zulu culture to the skies. Explore the vibrant culture of Zanzibar, a tropical paradise off the coast of Tanzania. Then we head on over to Ghana to meet Larry J and see how he upcycles secondhand garments into fashionable clothing. However big or small, our home should be a haven. There's a thousand jobs I need to do around the house. We just don't have the time. But it's not always easy keeping a house in order. It's such a shame we're not using the space. It is absolutely round full of stuff. But help is at hand. Ah! Look at this! Slug! You can take back control of your home with clever, common-sense hacks. It's perfect. I love it. That don't bust the bank balance. From this to this. That is just gleaming. Oh, oh my, my God. God. We'll show you how you can make life-changing improvements in just one day. It's nice and clean for Mummy. Yay! I absolutely love it. I don't think it's ever looked that good before. Oh. With better use, and a spruce up of your space. It's wonderful. I love it. You managed to do this in a day.
This is absolutely brilliant. I'm getting real teary now. In this week's episode of Finest Homes, we visit a modern coastal property in the beautiful Camps Bay, created by G Squared Architecture Studio. With mountain and sea views in abundance, it boasts a layered design that not only withstands, but also celebrates the natural elements. And in your opinion, what makes for a finest home? Views, light, simplicity. That's Finest Homes, only on the Home Channel. I'm Tanya Mammy. Tanya, how's it going? For years, I've been helping people stage, design, and sell their homes. Along the way, I've witnessed the birth of something new, cutting edge home technology. And now I'm on a mission to find the smartest, coolest, most innovative homes to get a glimpse of how we can all live better in the future. So you can control everything in the house, the shades, the music, the lights, the pool. You're the people I have to talk to. And I have help from three smart home experts who will offer insights into the tech, design, and structure of each home. This is Smart Home Nation. Coming up on this week's episode of Real Health, we'll be taking a look at whether or not berberine is effective on its own in the improvement of several metabolic disorders. We take an in-depth look at how neurofeedback can assist the brain to create and stimulate neural pathways. We'll also be discussing factors that may lead to iron deficiency anemia, as well as natural solutions that can help. We'll then share simple exercises to help ease lower back pain and improve core strength. And we'll be shedding light on how hormone optimization can assist men struggling with weight issues and hormone imbalances. That's Real Health, only on the Home Channel Plus. This week on The Property Game, we check in with the property investor who was featured in Season 1 and we find out how her property business has grown in the past year. I'm the one who's doing the online program. How can you think that Dego is a specialist? My income has grown. That's The Property Game, every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m., only on The Home Channel. Minute Meals is all about cooking food that's full of flavour at top speed. It's not just a Thai curry, it's a rice and a salad and a dessert all in under half an hour. So, need a liquidizer. Just going to chop this up, quite clanky styly. Have a little taste. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's happening. With a lovely custardy filling and a little caramel top, it's going to be gorgeous. 